Greetings all wizards and witches of Hogwarts Academy. We have another wonderful story for you tonight from the tales of Beedle the Bard, read by Yaniel of Gryffindor House. Prepare for wonders and amazement as the tales of Beedle the Bard will transverse and bring you to the magical realm of Harry Potter. Hello again, everybody. Tonight's tale is the tale of the wizard and the hopping pot. Now, I, I definitely put that book right on this table. That mischievous little soul, where did it go? Ready? Once again, Akio! There it is. Now, if you wish to follow along with your copy, The Wizard and the Hopping Pot can be found on page one. There was once a kindly old wizard who used his magic generously and wisely for the benefit of his neighbors. Rather than reveal the true source of his power, he pretended that his potions, charms, and antidotes sprang ready-made from the little cauldron he called his lucky pot. For miles and miles around, people came to him with their troubles, and the wizard was pleased to give his pot a stir and put things right. This well-beloved wizard lived to a goodly age, then died leaving all his chattels to his only son. This son was a very different disposition from his gentle father. Those who could not work magic were, to his son's mind, worthless. As he had often quarreled with his father's habit of dispensing magical aid to their neighbors, upon his father's death, the son found hidden inside the old cooking pot, a small package bearing his name. He opened it, hoping for gold, but instead found a soft, thick slipper, much too small to wear and with no pair. A fragment of parchment within the slipper bore the words, in the fond hope, my son, that you will never need it. The son cursed his father's age-softened mind, threw the slipper back into the cauldron, re resolving to use it henceforth as a rubbish pail. That very night, a peasant woman knocked on the front door. Hello. My grandfather is afflicted by a crop of wart, sir, she told him. Your father used to mix him a special poultice in that old cooking pot. Be gone, cried the son. What care I for your brat's warts? And he slammed the door in the old woman's face. At once, there came a loud banging and clanging and banging from the kitchen. The wizard lit his wand and opened the door. And there, to his amazement, he saw his father's old cooking pot. It had sprouted a single foot of brass and was hopping on the spot in the middle of the floor, making a fretful noise on the flagstones. The wizard approached it in wonder, but fell back hurriedly when he saw the whole of the pot's surface was covered in ugly red warts. Disgusting object, he cried, and tried firstly to vanish the pot, then to clean it by magic, and finally force it out of the home. None of his spells worked, however, and he was unable to prevent the pot from hopping after him out of the kitchen 
boing, 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 and following him up to the bed, clanging and banging loudly on every wooden stair. The wizard could not sleep that night for the begging of the warty old pot by his bedside. And the next morning, the pot insisted upon hopping after him to the breakfast table. Clang, 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 went the brass-footed pot. And the wizard had not even started his porridge when there came another knock on the door. An old man stood on the doorstep. Tis my old donkey, sir. Lost she is, or stolen. Without her, I cannot take my wares to the market, and my family will go hungry tonight. I am hungry now, roared the wizard, and slammed the door upon the old man. Clang, clang, clang went the cooking pot's single brass foot on the floor, but now its clamor was mixed with the brays of a donkey and human groans of hunger echoing from the depth of that pot. Be still! Be silent! shrieked the wizard, but not all of his magical powers could quiet the warty pot, which hopped on his heels all day, braying and groaning and clanging no matter where he went or what he did. That evening, there came a third knock upon the door. And there on the threshold stood a young woman sobbing as though her heart would break. My baby, my baby is grievously ill, she said. Please, won't you help us? Your father bade me to come if I was ever troubled. But the wizard slammed the door on her. Now the tormenting pot filled to the brim with salt water and slopped tears all over the floor where it hopped and brayed and groaned and sprouted even more warts. Though none of the villagers came to seek help at the wizard's cottage for the rest of the week, the pot kept him informed of their many ills. Within a few days, it was not only braying and groaning and slopping and hopping and sprouting warts. It was also choking and retching and crying like a baby and whining like a dog and spewing out bad cheese and sour milk and a plague of hungry slugs. This wizard definitely had a problem on his hands. He could not sleep or eat with the pot beside him. But the pot refused to leave, and he could not silence it or force it to be still. At last, the wizard could bear it no more. Bring me all your problems, all your troubles, all your woes, he screamed, fleeing into the night with the pot hopping behind him along the road into the village. Come, come, let me cure you. Let me mend you, let me comfort you. I have my father's cooking pot and I shall make you all well. And with the foul pot still bounding along, clang, clang, clang behind him, he ran up the street, casting spells in every direction. Inside one house, the little girl's warts vanished while she slept. The lost donkey was summoned from a distant briar patch and set down softly in its stable. The sick baby was doused in didony and awoke well and rosy. At every house of sickness and sorrow, the wizard did his best. And gradually, the cooking pot beside him stopped groaning and retching and became quiet and shiny and clean. Well, Pot, as the trembling wizard, as the sun began to rise over the horizon, the pot, per the pot burped out <clears throat> one single slipper he had thrown into it and permitted the wizard to fit it into the brass foot. Together, they set back to the wizard's house, the pot's footstep mus muffled at last. But from that day forward, 
the wizard helped the villagers, like his father before him, lest the pot cast off its slipper and begun to hop once more. Well, everybody, thank you for reading with me yet another tale of Beetle the Bard. If you liked this one, check out my first video, The Tale of Three Brothers, and be sure to check out my next video, which will be The Tale of Babidi the Rabbit. See you soon.